Thank you, sir. Harper Cove versus Joseph Alleman. Oh, my God. Good morning, Your Honor. Joe Hork, appearing for Harbor Cove. It's late. I don't know who that is either. Joseph Alleman. I have no response. You have them checked in. No, I do not. Have we don't have them checked in. Would you like to proceed? Uh, Your Honor, this is a subsequent hearing date. It's a non payment of rent case possession only. I'd be seeking a default judgment, please. All right. Raise your right hand to be sworn. You solemnly swear or affirm testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you out. I do. All right, you may proceed. You know, I've been presented by uh, with a ledger by my client that indicates the rent to retain is one thousand seven hundred eighteen. Uh, the attorney records office has calculated statutory attorney fee and court costs two hundred twenty five for a total balance of one thousand nine hundred forty three dollars. My knowledge that the defendant does not serve in uh, military, doesn't have a disability that would keep them from appearing here in court here today, and the property's been kept in reasonable repair and condition. Judgment to the plaintiff by default for possession. Redemption amount is in the amount requested. Rich issue in 10 days. Thank you. Thank you. Valley Ranch versus Nidal Hamden. They're both on. Just Good morning, Your Honor. Christopher Borkin for the plaintiff. <laughs> Morning, Your Honor. Nadal Hamden here. All right, gentlemen, where are we on this case? Your Honor, unfortunately, negotiations, negotiations did break down with the extra term uh, the defendant wanted to add into the agreement. Um, I was not able to review that agreement. I understand it's in the court file. Um, my signature on it is not valid. Uh, that was submitted without my permission. Um, the, uh, the term on there that is the issue is that the amount in escrow would be um, attributed uh, solely to August. There is a balance remaining, Your Honor. Uh, 1878, including court costs, is the amount owed to date. That is after the defendant claims that they paid July rent. Uh, there is a there is an amount at issue here that is not resolved just by my client waiving late fees. Um, I would request that um, the court would find no triable issue. Mr. Hamden, what do you have to say? All right, sir. So um, I have a dismissal case on this back in February. You, I think you have a copy of it, which is uh, num page number five on your file I sent to the court. Okay, what is your point? Uh, well, there's a dismissal on the case, so I don't know why we are in court again. The case wasn't dismissed, and even to the extent that it might have been dismissed, it might have, it was dismissed with without prejudice, so it can come back. Okay, so um, uh, my thing is, uh, this is the whole case. Uh, my rent a month is eighteen forty one times twelve. That's twenty two ninety two dollars. How much do you claim you owe? I don't owe them. Any money, sir? The reason right. why they Here's have. What I'm going to do? Give me uh, a trial sir, date. can I explain something? Can I, can I explain Give me something? a trial date. Let's do it soon because this is. The next week is our trial week. We can do Wednesday, twenty six. At what time? In person. Uh, sir, 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 sir. Twenty six. Non jury sir, trial on this matter will be I set have, I have July 26th. Sir. sir, do not interrupt me. I July 26th, 2003, 9 a.m. That is in person. All right, but I have an emergency. I cannot be at court at that day, sir. I've set the trial date, sir. I've given you guys time. I had a final settlement conference. You guys were going to resolve it. You haven't. I've set the trial date. All right, 26, 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. Thank you. Court calls the case of Jessica Ellenbogen versus Michael Rohane. Ellis Friedman for the plaintiff. As well as Natalie, is it Kenston? Keniston? Keniston. They are not checked in. Would you like to proceed, Mr. Freeman? Yes, sir. Do you solemnly swear or affirm testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So, help you got. Yes, I do. My name is Ellis Freeman. Go ahead. 
I'm the attorney and authorized agent for the plaintiff in this matter. Uh, these par parties were served by Judy Bell. They appeared in court last week, said they had receipts, were told to bring them to court and to send them to me. I have heard nothing from them. I have no explanation for their absence. Uh, I would ask for the possession judgment in the amount of $8,600 in rent, $190.70 in costs for a total of $8,790.70. Reduce me to the plaintiff. That is by default for possession. Redemption amount is in the amount requested with rich issue in 10 days. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a good weekend. You do the same, sir. Wendra Meda versus Ephraim Jackson. Good morning, sir. Gary Apps appearing on behalf of the plaintiff. Yes, Ephraim is here. This is a termination of tenancy case. Um, and where are we on this? Well, if I may, sir, since last hearing, I've learned some more stuff. Uh, I've never met my clients. It was just voices over the phone. Mr. Matha apparently is an older gentleman and his son or son-in-law has been trying to help me. And I, I thought I asked the right questions. They told me that the property was not certified and they were simply asking the tenant to move out. This is not their first time evicting them. The court dismissed the case previously with, without prejudice. And I'm not 100% sure why, but... They asked me to go in. Um, at the last hearing, the defendant said he had a lease. Well, I know in Kalamazoo County, if a property is not certified, the courts will not allow the lease to go forward. So I never got a copy of any lease, so I did not attach one to the pleadings. But whatever lease there may have been, if the property is not certified the way my client believes it isn't, then I don't think the lease is valid. And I don't know if that's a a reason for uh, dismissal with your court or not, but we're simply seeking possession of the property based on the fact that the property is not certified. So any lease would have been, uh, would have been avoidable at least and probably void uh, under, under today's conditions. Well, And Mr. Jackson, what do you have to say to this? Um, I do. We, we've been here to the court multiple times. So I don't, so the last time that we was here, I had to like um, get a ledger balance and a contact Hawk. So I did all of that, but he never contacted me back about anything. And I do have the lease. And I don't remember last court date. He even gave me a, I mean, last court session or, court case, he even gave me a copy of the lease. The, the, lent, the, the lease ends 10, and it ends in October. So I don't know, I don't know what- All right, let me, the, let me just, just ask this. Has rent been paid? I've tried to, that's the thing, I've tried to. I, Hawk was about the, what's to pay the last it. month you paid rent? Um, November. Of 2022? Yeah, and we tried to come, and I've, we've been to court in, I think it was the last court date was a couple months ago, and I was about to get it paid by Hawk, but he never sent me a ledger balance. I tried to contact him. I kept calling him, and I left the messages. Okay. Hold on. So, um, counsel, how do I know this property is not certified? Because this is I think this is a Pittsfield Township property. Well, Your Honor, what I, okay, I've been a lawyer 32 years and a landlord 43 years. I called the township to ask them, was there a certification requirement? They told me it was. I'd be happy to swear to this and that this property was not certified. So based on that and my clients telling me there was no lease and I took it meaning there was not a lease period they may have thought the lack of certification meant the lease was void. So I went ahead and filed for simply a termination with no request for any money. I did look up the prior case was that was dismissed, I think it was back in April, was also a termination. And they only paid a $55 filing fee. So there was no request for a supplemental complaint on the prior case either. So we're simply asking for possession with- But again, counsel, with what do I have? I understand your indication but 
what do I have as proof that the property is not certified? I'll I mean, if this is a Pittsfield Township property, which it looks by the address that it is, they will give you written verification that it's not certified and hasn't been inspected. But I don't have that before me. I didn't know. Okay, the first hearing was a month, well, a week ago. I didn't know that was an issue, but I had called Pittsfield earlier. Had I realized I needed to submit something from Pittsfield, I would have done so. So I guess if that's going to be an issue, if the court would consider a brief well, that's report. the basis. But that's the basis for your termination. I, what do you mean? Is it an issue? Your basis for the termination is is that the lease is void or voidable, and that there really is no lease because the property is not certified. But I don't have anything to say that it's not certified. I don't know. Okay. Again, if I may have an adjournment, I'll get a hold of Pittsfield. Uh, I'll get whatever documentation. July 28th, 2023, 9 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. You said what date? I'm sorry. 28th, one week. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Brian you, Brian Schumacher versus Ashley. Is it Bellick? It is, Your Honor. David Bittner on behalf of the plaintiffs. Yes, sir. Judge, this is a... Ms. Bellick? A... Yes. Okay, she is set. Got her. Okay. All right. What's the claim on this case? This is a termination case? It's a termination case. There is no lease, Your Honor. She was there by permission uh, for a period of time. She said four months. The property has been sold and... Uh, uh, the gentleman, elderly gentleman and his caretaker were to move in uh, June 1st. She has drug her feet and will not leave, has threatened to take the appliances with her when she does. Okay, can Ms. I Bellick, speak now? What's your position yeah. on this? Um, this? This property was purchased for my mother by my stepfather, Brian Schumacher. Brian Schumacher never physically lived in this home. Um, my mother told me that my son and I could stay here with her as long as I paid the rent and the utilities. She told me to let go of the rental home that I was in for eight years and to, because we could stay here. So I let my home go that I was in for eight years because my mother said that we could stay here. There was no time limit ever given. And then Brian Schumacher and I do not get along. So when he found out that I was still here, he went and sold the property to his friend and showed up here saying I was trespassing and expects me and my son to be out on the street. So at this point, I've been searching for somewhere for us to move to. I would have never let go of the home I had for eight years. We would have stayed there. I, my mother didn't tell me we could stay here. I mean, so I need some time to at least find somewhere for my son and I to go at this point. Council, is there any room for any additional time? No, Your Honor, the, the place has been sold. She was served personally by the sheriff, and they've been telling her. The place is, Your Honor, the place is still in Brian Schumacher's name. It has not completely been sold. They have not put in the new person on the title yet. And I know that for a fact from my mother. All right, well, here's what I'm going to do. I don't find that there's a tribal issue. I'm going to grant a judgment for possession um, after hearing on this matter. The writ date would be the 31st. I will extend the writ date in this matter, given the circumstances, to August 7th. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, can, I'm sorry, can you explain? I don't really understand what that means entirely. That means you need, normally, if I were to grant the judgment um, just outright, I would have given you 10 days to move because I okay, don't yes, have sir. an issue to try in this case. And so instead of the 10 days, I'm extending it out a week, trying to balance it a little bit based upon your needs to move and the tenant, the um, landlord's desire to have the property. Okay, I appreciate that. Frank? Thank you, Properties versus Elijah Hendrickson. Good morning, Your Honor. Hugo J. Mack appearing on behalf of 762 Properties. Elijah Hendrickson, present, Your Honor. All right. And 
This is a health hazard. Yes, Judge. All right. And Mr. Hendrickson, what's your position on the health hazard? Uh, I filed an answer. Um, uh, when? And I, with, when did uh, you file an answer? Yesterday. I don't have Honor. an answer. What? Yesterday, Your Honor. Where um, did you file it? I... I sent it in online, and it's getting mailed out this morning. Well, uh, I, I put it in the wrong file. Well, you there you it. go. Yeah. I have it. Mr. Mack, do you have a copy of the answer? Yes, Your Honor. I received an email of it uh, yesterday. Um, I'd waive any, any notice issues on this uh, matter, Your Honor. We certainly uh, got this late yesterday. Okay. Um, the basis for the health hazard is what? Your Honor, in my uh, pleadings, you'll see a report from RNA, where which is a, a, a property uh, maintenance, uh, building maintenance company, where they tried to get in to deal with a uh, roach uh, bed bug infestation problem, and Mr. Hendrickson has uh, repeatedly refused to allow access. Uh, when my process servers went to the home to knock on the door, there was never any answer. So, uh, Your Honor, and then and then uh, a real salient issue is there is no lease, and this gentleman has paid no rent. So, not only is there a health hazard, there's no lease, and therefore he has no no right to be there. So the uh, health hazard. Oh, that's is not true. I don't know. How are you saying you got into the apartment then? Your Honor. <clears throat> uh, well, however, he got into the apartment initially. I, I don't know. I wasn't representing my clients at that time. But the bottom line is there is no lease now. And there and th th there simply is no basis for its continued being there. Well, that's not true, because if, if he came in under any color of title, somebody said he could live there, whatever, then he has a tenancy by default. It might be a tenancy at will, but he's got a tenancy. Um, the, this is filed as a health hazard, so... I mean, he's got to correct the health hazard to the extent it exists. Mr. Henderson? Yes, Your Honor. Why, I've had. Why won't you let them in? I have let anybody in who has requested. They have not come to my property to deal with it. I have been assisted by another tenant in the complex who works as an uh, exterminator. He's treated my property several times. And the uh, hazard was extant when I arrived at the unit. And I've been dealing with it since. And I can provide witnesses to that fact. Well, the landlord wants to treat the property. What are you writing him in? Landlord to treat the property. I have no issue with that. What, Mr. Mack? What day can they go in and treat the property? Your Honor, I can I can uh, consult my, my client about that fa fairly quickly, but um, I need some clarification. My client informed me th there is no lease, there is no agreement for this gentleman. Okay, to be there. you can keep saying that. You have to tell me how he got into the apartment then. Your Honor, I, I would have to ask my client that how you got in there was before I, I got involved in, in the case. Um, at best, this is a uh, month to month tenancy, Your Honor. So if the court is. Seen... That's what I said about 10 minutes ago. All right. So if if we have to refile on the uh, on, on the month to month with a 30 day uh, 
notice to quit, we'll, we'll do that. But we just felt the health hazard was the more appropriate way to go about it because there is health hazard. And you, you know, with all due respect to what Mr. Hendrickson is saying, there is a report the court has from a reputable extermination company that says they have not been allowed in. Mr. Hendrickson is giving gratuitous statements to the court about he's got this and that. I see nothing in writing, Judge. Okay. So Okay. And all I'm asking is, <laughs> when can they go in? Your Honor, I will... Um... All right, look. I will, you guys can, get can we... all of this together. I'm going to adjourn this out one week. July 28th, 2023, 9 a.m. I need a date that they can go in and do the extermination because that's what's in front of me. Thank you. Thank that's you, sure. Your Honor. Court calls the case. Blue Heron Point Apartments versus Zakari Johnson. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, sorry, good morning, Your Honor. Mark Land on behalf of plaintiff. Wishful thinking. So, Ms. Johnson checked in. Johnson, they're not here. Would you like to take a default? Um, Your Honor, I believe that I've reached a uh, conditional dismissal with Mr. Johnson, and I did email it into the court. I do. Okay, I see it. And well, both signatures apparently being there, I'll indicate this case is conditionally dismissed. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Court calls the case of Valley Ranch Apartments versus Jalen Burroughs. Mark Landry from Plaintiff. Mr. Burroughs? Uh, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I, I got you. Okay. Um... How much is owing on this? Current balance, Your Honor, is $11,563.76. And I think we were trying to, what do you have? Yes. Escrow. At eight, nine, four, seven. <laughs> That's what I have. Do well, I have eight? I have eight, eight, four, five. Yeah. You got to carry your one. <laughs> okay. So I have eighty eight forty five in escrow. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So the, the thing is, and this is a case, I know, Mr. Lando, you weren't here, but it was kind of, I guess, slow walking it for him to get to his, because he gets a commission check. If I'm, am I right, Mr. Burroughs? That's correct. Yeah. That's correct, yeah. And so we were, he was putting his money in escrow as he was getting it, but I think there's going to be a larger payment come mid-month, or help me, Mr. Burroughs. I, yeah, so yeah, I get paid on the tenth. Well, I guess, and I get a weekly, but it's not much. So I get paid on my commission check every tenth of the month, unless that falls on a weekend, and um, that's where I can make you know the more significant and payment. That, and, and we were trying to get ourselves, I think, to the August tenth payment. Is that right? Yeah, um, I fell a bit short, but um, since we've last spoken, I've contacted Valley Ranch because um. I wanted to kind of just figure out a way to just get this all taken care of, you know, at, at once rather than having to keep doing this every week. But, um, the, is that the route... way of saying he doesn't, he doesn't like to see me. No, no, you're fine. You're no. <laughs> great. But no, um, I, um, I was going to take like a hardship withdrawal. Um, right. With I my remember for one K and, um, in order to receive that, I need, you know, pretty much in writing that 
you know, this amount needs to be paid. Otherwise, you know, eviction, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I never received that from Valley Ranch. I, I spoke, I called them twice, um, you know, because they, they don't want me coming into the office because they think I'm confrontational. I know that's a surprise. But um, they, they never sent me what I needed. They told me they would have their attorney contact me. Um, this was Wednesday. Um, but I never heard anything. I actually called and left a voicemail, but haven't heard anything back. But I simply need pretty much just a document stating that, um, you know, I have to pay this balance to avoid eviction. Um, All right. Gotta Look, okay, I got you, Mr. Burroughs. Mr. Landau, can we make that happen for him so he can try to get this withdrawal? Because he's he has done everything I've asked him to do that he could tell me he could do. He's we're. 3108 <laughs> it needs to be paid on the eleven thousand dollar balance. He comes in and pays the money. He he there is never an issue with that. He just has to get himself caught up. So uh, yes. So the answer to your honor's uh, question is yes, I'm happy to work with Mr. Burroughs. I'll be candid with the court. Um my client has really been pushing me to towards um the eviction end of things, but I, I, I know your honor's disposition on on this and and uh, Mr. Bros clearly has been um, making best efforts and paying a substantial amount of money into the into the escrow. So um, absolutely, uh, I I would request the following. Um, I would request that the court release the escrow to the plaintiff um, forthwith. To have and, a deal. No, 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 no. We're not going to do it that way. Oh, they may want to evict him. He has come here the last, I think, two times, told me the same thing that he was telling me today, that he's willing to do what he needs to do. He gets his check, and he had to remind me, it's a tenth of the month, and he puts his money in, and if they don't want to work with him, I'm not releasing anything till they work with him, give him the letter so he can get a hardship. That's the way I'm going to work. So you guys got week to get that done i'll adjourn okay. this out 28th you know my position so you guys make it happen if it doesn't happen then i'll figure out something else for mr burroughs so I can make just one pay one. Support and you guys can come try to find it july 28 2023 10 a.m can i make one note for that please don't want to see me again but he's gonna have to could, could i make one note for that uh for that that document um I don't know if it's if this is correct, if it could can include this, but um, if it could have like the following month's rent on there as well. Um, the August I can work rent. With you however you want, yeah. Mr. Burroughs. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I can work with you however you want, Mr. Burroughs. I've got your email address. I will follow up this afternoon with you. Um, we will work together. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you.